everybody, my name is Hannah. Welcome to Indie Buzz Rocks. I'm so excited. Tonight is Wednesday night and 7 p.m. And I'm very honored to get to interview Mr. Johnny San Francisco, who just created a whole brand new album, his very first singing album. So he's really excited and it's super beautiful. So I hope you guys have a chance to hear it. Um, would you hand me that? Yeah. You can hear it. And then now I can show you what it looks like. Turn off my alarm clock. Shoot. I hope it just turns off. Okay. Johnny's supposed to come in any minute now. Hi, Mel. How are you? Welcome back. Yay. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for Johnny, San Francisco, to call. We're going to ask him some serious questions to find out exactly who he is and what is going on with his life and this most beautiful. Oh, there he is. I'm going to end plug him in. Go live. Okay, I just sent him. Can you hear his music? I know you can't really see. It's a beautiful album. I in, I invited Johnny. Did you see the um invite? You're supposed to invi get invited to come. I mean, I did invite you. Anyway. He'll probably figure it out in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm going to play you some more of his songs. So that was In the Light. And the next one that's up is called Trust Fall. Johnny, where are you? I just realized that it's backwards. It says you can't read it correctly, can you? Oh well. Hi, my name is Bloody Hey, Hey, Johnny. I know you're not here yet, but well, that's okay. We'll find a way to get you on here. Um, I have a load of questions. So, actually, these guys here are just plain funny. So, I can write a bunch of answers that. <laughs> but these. That's my living room. Yeah. Johnny, you're unable to join. What happened? Um, I'm not sure. I did request an invite. And it says you're unable to join. It says you're green, which means you're online. Um, and I clicked it. So try it again. We'll get there. Thank you. Glad you can hear it this time. Been a funny words. I appreciate that. It's a little bit um confusing. Well, it is confusing to me, but I'm getting it this time. 
Touch with um, Johnny. We're going to interview him. This is him right here. Ah, oh, there he is. Wait, which one is the real Johnny San Francisco? Hi, how are you? How are you? Good to Good. see you. Good. We missed you. We were trying to get you all set up and set on. I was able to watch. I saw you rocking out. It's awesome. Did you like my um, non-conventional um, rhythm? <laughs> it works. Dance is a good thing. So um, I'm going to turn the music down a slight bit. So hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Hannah. This is Annie Buzz Rocks. And that is Johnny San Francisco, who just completed his very first singing album called Go There Now. Oh, can you see it? There it is. Go There Now. And we've been listening to it. And we have a bunch of questions for you. My first question is, let's get some, get down to some of the nitty gritties, like where were you born mm -hmm. and raised? Oh, you're eating something? No, I, let's see, uh, born and raised. So I'm from the Midwest. Ah. I was born in a smallish town, Northern Indiana. So if you Indiana, think about- Indiana, Indiana. Yeah, exactly. Indiana looks like a boot, sort of top of the boot. Uh, oh, do you speak Italian there? Just kidding. No, but you know, uh, <laughs> it's funny you say that because oh. I claim to have been raised by Italians in Indiana. There's a bunch of Italians there that took care of me, so. You look very Italian. Um, I love Italian food because of the, the Lou Case family is the family. And then, but in high school, you know, I was like 15 years old, we moved to Los Angeles. So uh, I oh. like to say that I was formed in Los Angeles, raised in Indiana, formed in Los Angeles. I approve of those, of those words <laughs> as I can understand what exactly that means. Um, being formed in Los Angeles is quite a trick. <laughs> totally. Quite a trick. I was born and raised here, so yeah, it's a little bit cuckoo. <laughs> but we love it, don't we? <laughs> sure do. What, um, oh, okay. So what was the very first song that you learned to sing? Yeah, it's an old Kiss song, uh, Rock and Roll. Ha! <laughs> Uh, geez, I forgot I, about that. Yeah, I was probably 12 years old, and uh, my buddy's older brother uh, handed down a guitar to him. And then I, I was like, all right, let, I went and found some drums. And it was the first band I was in. We'd sit in the basement and try and figure out songs. And uh, yeah, rock and roll, was just playing those toms. And, and we were really weren't singing, we were screaming. Wow. Um, but you know, it was a kiss song. So, so why? How did you? How did you um, get into the drums? Like, what made you pick up the drums when your friend had the guitar? Yeah, you know, it probably started with my my late father. Uh, he was a really good jazz clarinet player. Oh. And so uh, he had me start clarinet and piano. That was the base, the foundation. Oh. Um, but then uh, it wasn't very rock and roll. You know, it wasn't super cool. And you were 13 around this time? Yeah, 12, 13. And then because my buddy had the guitar, I had the drums because we had a band. Um, but what happened was is uh, mom and dad would only let me practice like during the daylight. And then I, I just wasn't getting any good. And I sort of... 
hit my dad up. I said, we're gonna have to try something else. And he's like, well, what do you want to play? I was like, guitar. And that, that switch it. Yeah. Now, is that because they didn't let you play drums at night? Yeah. It's too so loud. You to play the guitar. That's funny. I was laughing because, um, you know, as a little kid, you already wanted to be the rock and roller playing, staying up all night <laughs> long, playing your music. Totally. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's uh, quite hours, cool. hours in the basement playing music, and for sure, yeah. Oh, so now you are you still proficient in clarinet and piano? I don't play the clarinet anymore, um, but I do play piano, mm -hmm. not a ton. Um, and look, at, I would be remiss. I see in the chat that my cousin Bernadette's on here. Oh, hi. her big brother. <laughs> Her big brother is an amazing drummer, and I used to, I, I was able to see him play a few times, and he's older than me, and I used to say, oh, I'm going to do that one day. Like, you know, you know how big cousin, like, and he was, they were the Californians. We were in Indiana. They, oh. were, the cool, they were the cool kids. So you really look good. Yeah, it's that. so funny that I see her name here. So, but <laughs> yeah, it's that, you know, it's sort of like your cousins, your buddies, and of course your dad, you know, but. Um, I need to play more piano. I, you know, it's similar to a guitar. They're stringed instruments. And so I think it's a good place to write. So we'll see. There's a lot of cool keyboard work. Um, the woman that produced my record played a lot of that stuff on the record. Uh, I oh, think it's she did. beautiful. Because I, yeah, I think there uh, is a whole band with you. So you just played the guitar and sang and she played all the other instruments? She played anything that's a key, any any keys. Uh, another gentleman played drums, and then another woman played um, uh, played um, played the bass. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you had your own little band too. But is this the first time? Um, you know, the first time it's like being sort of that singer. As the uh, but singer. I played in a few different bands growing up, uh, mostly guitar. So. Oh, good. What was the first band you played in? Uh, let's see. We were just coming out of high school. And um, we were called Dog on the Horizon. Connected to Venice. Um, there's a guy named Mark Stagel, who's a Venice. Yes. Potential Mark, was, Mark and I were in that band together. We went to high school together. Um, where did you go to high school? We went to um, a high school in Laverne called Damien High School. Like all boys Catholic school, we had to have our hair short, tuck our shirts in. It sucked. <laughs> well, no, that's actually very good to be an all boys. Uh, 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 to have to have that to have that background um, growing up is very important. I think. I mean, I went to public schools and it is what it is. And, but I also had friends that went to private schools and I just felt like they, they were a little bit more like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing, I will say something. though, when you go to like an all boys school like that, you don't really care what you look like. Cause there's no <laughs> girls around, you know? So you don't really have so to bathe. <laughs> you use your brains more. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So, um, what was your, are you ready for your next question? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I got a, what was your very first concert that you saw? Oh, yeah, let's see. I um, went to this, like, heavy metal festival in southern Michigan. Oh. And uh, my buddy's dad put me and a couple friends in a, in a like, a, a van RV thing. His older sister... And it was like a full day thing. And it was awesome. It was like Motley <laughs> Crue. It was Ozzy Osbourne. The band called Triumph. Uh, another band called Quiet Riot. And I remember uh, saying, yeah, like live music. And, I, you know, that was, I miss it. I, you know, like we, we can't go see it right now. I miss it dearly. Yeah. How, um, how old were you? Yeah, same here. Oh, uh, man, I was, uh, well, I know for sure I was 12 years old. Wow, that's mm -hmm. fabulous. I yeah, love it. Was it. Awesome. it was awesome. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, what was your favorite concert that you've seen? Oh, boy, that is so hard. Um, 
Okay, yeah, well. I was lucky. I got to see a lot of the Jane's Addiction shows um, uh, in their heyday. Back and in the back in the just, 90s. Yeah, that was just a really cool experience. I mean, it, it was such a new sound. And um, those shows, for sure. Um, you know, through the years, before he passed, I got to see Chris Cornell a lot in Soundgarden. Oh, and that's that, lucky. Yeah, I and mean, Chris Cornell's voice was really another instrument. He and, Was he a big influence for you at all in terms of just switching over from drums to um, singing or what? Guitar? I guess you already said yeah. you're pretty kind of con you'd already moved on to the guitar. Yeah, look, I think those two bands, another guy named Jeff Buckley. Ah, know, yeah. If I think about um, their good sort of their melodies and melodic sort of guitar sort of um, chord progressions, for sure. You know, like when you wear the grooves out of a record, and I think you and I chat about this once, like I, I have, I've often asked friends like, uh, what's your desert island record? Like if you could have one record and that's it, like the rest of your life, what's it gonna be? And for me, it's, it's Jeff Buckley's Grace. And oh, really? Yeah, that's a record I would be plenty fine just listening to forever. So. Ah, oh, is it is it more because of the lyrics or more because of just the the music behind it? Uh, definitely all of the above. I, I mean, I think you know he's another one where I felt I felt like his voice was an instrument. Yes. You know, and and that's incredible. I don't know how people pull that off. I can't do that. Um, <laughs> and then, like, just the the pieces of chords. Like, if you and I pick up and play, like, a major chord, you have these different sort of phrasings and pieces of chords, which I think were, well, way before their time. And I think if, if he showed up today on the scene, people would be blown away. Like, timeless, Aww. I guess, is the way i describe it. Aww. That's amazing. I love that. Well, let's just hope you don't get stuck on an island with a record, but no record player and no, oh, and no electricity. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, I'm going to get that you know, memorized. Like a conch shell and then just spin the conch shell around the record. So I think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you share one of your earliest childhood memories? Yeah, let's see. Um, you know, there's a memory. I, 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 I sort of feel like six, age six and seven, there's a flurry of activity in there that I go back to. And, and, and I used to like pester my mom and dad. I'd get in some trouble and not like bad. I was just, I'd get bored. So then I would do dumb stuff around the house and I got in trouble. So I decided, me and my chihuahua, I've always had a dog, um, we were going to run away. And so we ran away. And I, I think I just, I took a couple laps around the field, because uh, we lived side in the country. And Indiana. I, yeah, Indiana. I took a couple laps around the field, and as it started to get dark, I looked at, at the chihuahua and said, we better go home, so. Oh. <laughs> how, how sweet what, uh, what um what what did you cry what did your mom do when you got home i was in more trouble i think i was like double grounded <laughs> oh poor but, thing hey. well i'm glad that you got home i'm glad did you ever run away again no Oh, that's good. <laughs> Except for uh, now, right? Now you don't live there. But yeah, it's fun. um, what? Funny was... enough, it, it's a. It, funny enough, it's a song. It's not on the record. It's a new song. I've started to work on some new songs, and that's a that happens to be a chorus. Maybe that's on top of mind. Is it, I talk about. I talk about not wanting to run away. Oh, really? Funny enough, yeah. Oh, and which song do you remember? It, well, it's not on the record. Oh. Um, 
It's a newer song. So on the next record, I'll come back and talk to you again. Ooh, we look forward to hearing it. I actually also tried to run away once when I was in You did? Yeah. Yes, but I was quite older than you. I was closer to, like, my, like, teenage high school years. And I also didn't get very far. <laughs> I only made it to the library. And then I went to my friend's house. And then I called my mom. And then I went home. <laughs> so, yeah. I also was a little bit chicken, but I was mad enough to run away. <laughs> um, is there, oh, what is your most, well, first of all, do you karaoke? And what is your favorite Ugh. karaoke song? I, I, you know, I, it's not, I don't do it. I think I, um, uh, I love being there with other people. <laughs> like, I love watching, like, the train wrecks. And then I love watching, like, the people. It's like, oh, my God, give them a record deal. You know, there's sort of, like, every and then everyone in between. Yeah. Um, I think if you give me enough adult beverages, I will definitely sing karaoke. And I think for years, my go-to has always been, like, Journey, Don't Stop Believing, oh, maybe a little a Neil one. Diamond. Oh. Um, my problem with that stuff, though, is I try and sing it like a cover. Like, I don't, like, right. you know, karaoke, you, you kind of, you have the, their music and you're sing, trying to sing it like them. I always try and sing it like a cover and get, <laughs> sit on, like, the leather, pleather couch they have in the room. And sulk. I'm sure you do a fabulous, fabulous job. <laughs> I, wanna, I miss karaoke. I've never yeah. done it myself, but I, yeah, I miss going out and having karaoke. We're going to have to do that sometime. Uh, I'm in. Let's do it. Yay. Um, okay, speaking of singing, what is your um, earliest memory of you singing? Did I just ask you that? No. <laughs> no. Um, let's see. So, um Sorry. Someone asked me this question once before, and I, you know, I was sort of like, <laughs> well, week. you did, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, and I, I remembered, um, like, it was definitely, like, you, you, like, in the choir as a kid, right? Ooh. And then, actually, it's back to the Catholic school thing. We, me and my buddy signed up for, like, this, like, performance, because you could get out of class. And then oh, you go, right. like, practice. We liked that part of it. But then <laughs> I realized that that is actually misinformation. I once sang a song at my mom and dad's, like, anniversary party when I was, like, maybe second grade. Oh. And I sang an Elvis song, Hound Dog. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Hound and, Dog. Yeah. Did you, I, did and you, I, did I, like, you dance really... around at seven? You're, like, in second grade, you're, like, seven. Yeah, totally. I, oh, I did. I had some moves. I had, um, and this is before my break, break dancing sort of career. So oh. it was a little more of a 70s vibe with a, you know, suit and, and the like. Yeah. Um, they call her. Yeah. It was awesome. What, um, did you have all the like, all the little dancing around with it too? Yeah, I think there was a lot of hip stuff going you know and and then you kind of hot dog it when you're that age and everybody starts laughing at you it sort of escalates yeah yeah i love it um one two three 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 okay are you ready for something a little bit more in depth i'm gonna go right on in and ask yeah. you if you have you if you know what it is that like what defines you? Like, who are you and how do you fit into this world? Yeah, you know, that that's something I, 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 I think of that a lot. Because I think, you know, like, we're not here too long. You know, we're, yeah. you know, and, and then when you think about that, you, you, you've got, like, these moments and sort of the now. And um, so ultimately, I think everybody has a purpose. I I think um, I'm a connector. Oh. So I love, I'm a self-proclaimed pack animal. I think it's because <laughs> I've always had dogs, frankly. 
Aww. But I I love connecting people and being part of, you know, sort of a tribe. And uh, I've just always felt like wherever I'm at in the world, I've been really lucky. I get, you know, travel around the world and stuff. And I feel like I, I have someone almost everywhere that I can call and have a coffee with or. And, That's really uh, lovely. How did yeah. you get travel all over the world. I like that. I like yeah, that. It's just, a very uh, warm community building environment and it and it goes it suits you well. It suits you really well. Especially with the kind of music that you're hmm. um I don't know if you can hear the hear it at all. It's kinda of low, but your music is so deep and it, it really draws you into to thinking about, you know, the spaces that we we um fill in our minds so I might be you know typing a letter <laughs> yeah or an email I guess <laughs> well, totally. I said that. <laughs> but your brain is thinking of so many other things based on your emotions and you're so well that's so part of you that I, I like that you're a community connector that's very emotional and sweet really sweet aspects it's a good oh, one <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I like that. What do you absolutely love about music? Oh, yeah, this is easy. I love how music um, is like memory recall, like muscle memory. Like you can hear something and I can remember exactly where I was or I can remember a smell. You know, I could hear a song. Maybe we get off off tonight and I could hear a song later and be like oh I remember that smell it was a hot summer day you know 10 years ago isn't that interesting yeah. how the sounds can create not only the visual memory but mm. the sense memory sight sound smell touch taste mm. um, there's a, an acting teacher that I studied uh, Uda Hagen and she talks about that same Whoa. Um, a sense memory thing. So, like, if you're sitting in the coffee shop and you're supposed to be having a hot coffee, obviously they're not going to give you a hot coffee. But yeah, you know, so you'll you'll use that sense memory, and that's beautiful. I didn't realize musicians have that same thing. Very cool. I like it. Now here's the hard one. What do you hate about music? <laughs> Uh, I, um, You're like, that's easy. <laughs> uh, you know, look, I think hate strong word for me, but what I don't like about it, I actually just experienced this, you know, yeah. doing the record, going into the studio. Um, you, you, you have to keep absolutely perfect time. And that, that's Whoa. hard. And, and, uh. You get there and you rehearse, and, but that's the thing I love about live music is there are sort of no rules, and unless you're with a drummer, right? And but like if you're just playing a guitar, busking, or you know, it, you can you can push those boundaries, and so it's a little more freeing for me. But I, you know, I've got I've got buddies that are purists, and they're like, oh no, man, you gotta work on your time, buddy. Like dial it in, dial it in, and. How I'm do aware you of work on your better. time? That's, that's yeah. I need to get better at it. Just through practice. Yeah, you know, look, I, I, if you talk to a lot of musicians, unless they're drummers, even drummers, you know, it's the dreaded metronome, and like, go practice with a metronome. Oh, I know the metronome. Uh, I yeah. do not like the metronome. <laughs> yeah, it just feels so benign and restrictive to me. It's hard. Yeah, and then it's hard. Wait, yeah, it's like you're playing duh, 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 and it's going ding, ding, ding. You're like that, huh? What? <laughs> That's very good, very true. I like. Um, I was. It's interesting how when you can play, when you play by yourself, you're right. You can just, you can go slow or fast or longer or shorter. But when you're with everybody else, you mm. really gotta be in time. It's isn't that interesting? It's so, it's so important for our lives as well. Yeah. You know, like finding that timing, that rhythm, that that groove, and and being able to adjust when you're with people or when you're with yourself. You know, that's right. Very cool. Very deep. I like that. 
Um, are you ready? Yes. Can you think of three words to describe yourself? Oh yeah, let's see. Um, I'm loyal. Uh -huh. Um. That's a good thing. Yeah, definitely loyal. I'm introspective. I think that shows up on the record, like if you listen to my lyrics. Mm. Um, in the counter, okay. I'm definitely stubborn. You can ask my mom. I'm pretty stubborn. Hmm. What do you do that's so stubborn? What's your worst stubborn Ugh. thing? Um, yeah, look, I'll be honest. I don't like to be wrong. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I think that's sort of rooted in, uh, I can be competitive, so I don't like to lose. I don't think anybody likes yeah. that either. As long as you keep your claws down, we're all right. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the other side, the other side of that though too, is I can be principled and care deeply, deeply about stuff. So if I'm debating someone, I can get pretty stubborn. I think, um, uh, I have, uh, I have bulldogs, and they are both very loyal and very stubborn. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they they say you, you're sort of like your dog. So yeah, I think there's a little bit of that. Happening. So are they introspective though? <laughs> do they have a conscience? Do they, you know, do animals have a conscience? And uh, are they introspective? I think my my dogs are very introspective, <laughs> um, for sure. <laughs> I would say my cat is very introspective as well. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> um, but it's true. Your music is very introspective. Very beautiful lyrics. I really hope you guys have a chance to go. I know Spotify seems weird. You have to, can't just like push a button and it comes out. You have to click and clap. But all you have to do is type in Johnny San Francisco. There he is. But there's his album cover. There it is. There it is. Go there now. Really beautiful music. And if you can hear Thank it. You. Can you Thank hear you. It? All right. You ready for another question? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Um, have you ever written a love song? Uh, you're recording this? Yes. <laughs> uh, I have. I love I, I've written a love song. Uh, you know, I've probably written a couple, I'll be honest with you. But um, this past year, I did a lot of writing. You know, we're all in quarantine kind of ish still. And uh, uh, frankly, m most of the record was written during quarantine. And uh, a song that's not on there is definitely a love song. Maybe it'll 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 be on and something later. Good. Um, um, but yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, sure, sure. There's introspective stuff that I write about memories. Um, I think I'm the record go back has to that actually, I can't believe you just brought that up. I'll go back. I'll get right back there, but keep okay. going with the love song. Yeah, no, I think then, you know, the, uh, um, I naturally write to share my feelings. There's an apology on the record. Um, and then, yeah, like, I think my hope is, you know, like I said, I'm going to go record some more later, later this year, probably. But my hope is, you know, one day we can look back on these and these are sort of pieced together and there's a bit of a, some connective tissue there. And, um, yeah, I, I, look, I'm lucky. I've got, I got a lot of love in my life. And, uh, so, um, for me, I think singing about it, and, and maybe going as far as recording it. Uh, yeah, I'll go there someday. I'll go there. I mean, even writing it, I, yeah. um, you know, and then singing it. And then, I mean, okay, so writing a love song is definitely introspective. And, but it's a lot easier sometimes than something that would be more introspective, I feel like. I mean, yeah. I don't know whatever but yeah yeah i think just whether it's a love song or an apology or you know maybe you're talking about some sort of memory or pain it's it's a lot easier for me at least to do it in music it's not easy to share though 
Yeah. It's very no, no. It, yeah, it's scary for sure. Very hard. I, I actually wanted to, going back to the introspective and the album, I wanted to ask you, um, well, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty serious question, but like, what is, um, the, the saddest lyric on your album and what song is that on? The what? Which, what's that? Um, oh, what, the saddest? Yeah, I mean, look, I think that, um, I think the song on there called The One is a memory of a la the last conversation I had with a friend of mine who has since passed away. Ooh. And uh, it's sort of a, a memory of that last conversation. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know that would be the last time I talked to her. And so I think there's a little bit of regret. Um, oh yeah, I'll be super honest. Like we argued during that conversation. So my last memory of her really is an argument. And so, you know, my my hope is, uh, you know, she, and she loved music. If, if she was around, she'd be tuning in right now and commenting and. Uh, I know she's heard it. I think she's heard it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I'm really glad that you have an opportunity to express it, especially, you mm. know, in a song that others are going to hear. And, and the, those of us, when you resonate with them or when you do hear them, you know, it, it, it'll help somebody else, you know? It'll make them feel, at least they're not alone yeah. feeling so sad, you know? What is yeah. the... Uh, what is this, the lyric that you think is one of the saddest ones in, in the song, The Ones? I'm playing it, Alan. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I think, um, you yeah, know, there's a, there's a lyric in there where I say, I'll, I'll leave you with your mind. And, and I think there was a, a point there where I knew that, you know, she, she was just really struggling with addiction. And... You know, it was, yeah, I could tell she kind of got to a point where there was probably not coming back. And I, I honestly, I was really mad at her, just to be honest. You know, yeah. I could, and there's a bit of helplessness there. Um, and yeah, it was de I would say definitely that sort of feeling. Well, we'll send you some prayers and some hugs up mm. in heaven. And hope that she gets to hear this song with a couple hot chocolate and some marshmallows so she <laughs> on the inside too yeah I'm sorry about that i've also yeah. lost friends but mm. yeah you, you're mad you i want them back you know so i'm yeah. proud of you for that it's ah thank important. you it's important and now the flip side of that what is the happiest lyric that you have on your album or cheeriest or yeah no i think um i look i think the song trust fall yeah um you know i to me you know i think they're sort of i've been sort of one of these that's like i kind of take care of, i want to take care of people in my tribe around me um before i take care of myself and then I, I realized that there's a lot of people around me that take care of me and that you can lean on, right? Don't be afraid to lean on them. It's sort of that concept of a trust fall that they're always there for you. Oh. And to me, that is um, partly maybe a hint to the look forward to, you know, the, the next music I, I sort of record, but also just kind of a thank you, you know, to those people that have been there no matter what, you know, because look at I. I'm sure I pissed them off. I'm sure I've forgotten stuff, right? And uh, I do my best when I commit to doing something for someone to follow through. But every once in a while, maybe I've missed. And so I'm grateful that they're there no matter what. You know, they're, you know, there's a tribe. There's this big tribe. But then there's sort of that, that circle, right? The, the, the people that are right there at your table no matter what. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really a song for them. Really thanking them. Aw, that's beautiful. Well, here it is. A little
That's nice. I like that. So you, you looked out into your friends and you found them. They brought you back some, some warmth. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. What is the most exciting time that you've had as a musician? Um, look, I, you know, this is just super in the moment, but just this record was so much fun. I, um, you know, I sort of shared with you before, I, I've never sang on a record. So it's sort of the first time doing that. I, um, and that was scary. Um, and I, I think too then doing it virtually was pretty incredible. Um, oh, you know, yeah. so the whole Marian, album was virtually? Yeah. Wow. Um, the produ this woman that produced it, Miriam Kudus, uh, in Oakland, California, I was in a studio with live drums one day and then another day with live bass at distance, right, with safety and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I happened to be spending some time up in Oregon, and so I did all my parts up there. But for me, it was that sort of that connection we talk about, and I'm mm -hmm. missing it, right? I'm, I'm missing it. I can't be there doing the interview with you in person, right? Like, I can't do this stuff right now or go, go see a live show or go in a studio together and play as a band. So it was really a way for me to connect with people. And yeah. it, it was so fun. It was, it, I learned a ton and about yeah. myself. And then, um, you know, the, the Miriam, like I, I'm really grateful for her. She pushed me as a musician, you know, she would, She'd come back and be like, hey, try this. Or, and this, is, this isn't this is new science. Like, I think most musicians yeah. are in this spot of, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. It's one thing I could sit here and play 10 songs and it's, right. but she was like, well, hey, you can do this or try this. And hey, I think you should, and th that was a really cool journey. And again, it was that connection of interaction, collaboration and, um, so that that was, I would say, like, probably a highlight. Yeah, super exciting. Very cool. Very cool. I love it. I'm proud of you for getting uh, through that, like that little fear of your, your, I don't know, like the butterflies in your stomach going, yay, I really want to do this, but I think I'll just stay under the covers because it's a little too hard <laughs> <laughs> or a little too scary or, you know, so good for you. Very congratulations. I yeah. love it. I, I think it's a beautiful album. And um, I'm, I'm impressed that you took those leaps to, mm -hmm. to go to your singing and really go there. Because I, I mm -hmm. feel like you're, you're, the whole album is very emotional mm -hmm. on both sides. Happy side, sad side, introspective side, and, you know, whatever all the other sides are. It's all, you know... It doesn't have any heavy metal in it, but, you know, it does rock out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No, it's beautiful. I love it. I really love uh, it. I'm super, thank you. I'm super thrilled for you. And I can't wait for you to do your love songs. I think you should do a whole love song album. <laughs> um, but on that note, um, are you ready for another question? Let's do it. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh, yeah, this uh, time travel for sure. Ah, uh, you day. remember it. <laughs> yeah, I, look, I, um, and, and I look at it, I would say to, to the caveat, not to like try and change history or prevent anything or, you know, change the, the natural course. We well, really can't. That's a rule of time experience. travel, right? You can't, that? you can't, that's a rule of time travel. You can't change the path. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't want to change the past. I don't, I, I wouldn't want to do it to like know the future, but it's more to just experience. I, you know, like music, you and I are passionate about it. We love it. There are a bunch of bands that predate me. I would have loved to have seen and, you know, yeah, didn't get to, or like go live in the twenties and, you know, you know, I just love, like if I watch a film today, for example, I love me a really good period piece. Mm -hmm. And I think I have this sort of 
uh, there's this romanticism of being, you know, living in the 20s and I don't know, have a zoot suit on. And <laughs> I was like in the Renaissance with the flowing outfits and, <laughs> yeah. the, and the velour and the like, the gems everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think all that would be amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. I like Maybe that. Time we'll travel is a good idea. Yeah, especially if you can time travel and get those lottery numbers. Yeah, well, there, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can give them away. It doesn't mean you have to keep them. <laughs> well, that's true. Absolutely. Um, what, uh, um, wait. Oh, time travel. Um, you know, you'd go to the 20s. That's what I was going to ask you. Where would you go? And you were, and I forgot. The 20s. Yeah, I think the cool. 20s would be cool. Uh, not these 20s that we're in. These have gone off to a rocky start. But, like, you know, the roaring 20s. Like a zoo. So do you like zoo. dancing then? Um, you know, I do. I got some, pat. I got some, you know, I got some moves. Um, I, I don't, I think, I think that it, they, I just would embarrass people with my dancing, but I like it. I think <laughs> I think dancing is like a really cool. I mean, it's connected to the whole tribe thing, right? It's a way to express, and I'm not very. And be good. part of a group if you can't sing or play guitar. That's right. Or drums. Yeah. Um. Very good. Is there um something? Okay. Here's another question for you. Ready? I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up. What do you think about the words heavy and love? Heavy and love. Love. Um, so I think, um, I think love is essential to life. Mm. I think that it's, I mean, like it's beautiful, but it's scary. Mm. Um, it can cause you to do dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> It can. Um, <laughs> Who would do it, such a dumb thing? <laughs> and and well, I'm not gonna get in it. And it's 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 also a great feeling, right? Like the butterflies that you get with it. And then you said the other words, heavy. Yes. Mm. Yeah, for me, heavy is. You know, it, it is those things. You know, look, we're on, on this journey. And I mentioned earlier, you know, we don't have a ton of time here. And, you know, you, you, I think it's fair to understand that it's never, it's not always going to be sort of good, love, great butterflies. There's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some heavy moments in life. And I think it's just how you sort of navigate those and come out on the other end. And um, there's something my, that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, is there something that helps you? Um, what do you do that helps you to help navigate through some of the heavier things or the more delightful things? Yeah, I mean, look, I think heavier stuff, definitely music, right? It's a great escape. And it's a great way to express myself. Um, I think I run a lot. It's a good way to deal with, like, the heavy um with the love i don't find a pretty girl you know like, <laughs> um, i don't think your girlfriend would be too happy about that <laughs> and, and and i think um but i think what's important about uh, the love thing though is and look i don't know that i've always ah yeah you know like allow like allow yourself to receive love and be loved. And then, I, you know, I think there's a, there's sort of like a, um, a dance there, you know, there's, whether you're courting someone for the first time or like, look, my mom and dad, before my dad died, they were married 60 years. That's like a six and a zero, like. Wow. Right? <laughs> I, and so imagine, you Woo! know, that type of love. So I, I look. That's yeah. I, yeah, that's where I feel about. It. That's impressive. Yeah, that's impressive. Very true. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, all right. One more question for you. 
what do you know absolutely like absolutely what do you know like mm. in the gut or in your heart yeah look um i probably have a a couple of different answers to this i think for me absolutely um you know, this thing, I, you know, I sort of already talked about tonight. This is a little different than when we chatted a while back. It's like this thing of purpose. Uh, uh, I've been thinking a lot about this, this this past week or so and just thinking about we, we can all make an impact in our short time here. Mm -hmm. You know, and even if it's a positive influence on someone else or – you know, as simple as picking up a piece of trash on the ground, you know, like we can all do better and make everything around us better. And I don't know, I'm just my hope is, and I think I'm probably partly motivated by a lot of the chaos in our nation's capital last week is, you know, we can all do a better job of just getting along, you know, and, and, um, I think our survival depends on it. And uh, we're, we're, we survive, we're humans. And uh, you know, that's a bit of the other, other part of the answer for me is like, I, I believe in science, you know, and we're, we're gonna survive this thing that we're faced with this year. And even though it feels like it's a big, big climb, big hill to climb, we'll survive it. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll as humans, we find a way to evolve and we're really, we're resilient, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the one thing that you know absolutely is we are resilient. We will, we need, and we, we all need to um, do things better, whether it's picking up a piece of trash or being a, being a best friend to your neighbor or not a best friend, but a best neighbor to your neighbor. Right. Like, yeah. You know, love thy neighbor as thyself. And, you know, uh, a neighbor isn't necessarily just somebody that lives with you or next to you. A neighbor is somebody who's in line at the grocery store with you or, you know, the car next to you. And well, it's a very good point. Yes, I think that everybody probably knows that, absolutely. <laughs> but we don't always follow it, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. No, and, and I look at it, I think it's okay. If we stray from it, just be aware that you kind of got to pull it back, right? Yes, I agree. I agree. Um, hmm. Let me ask myself, did I get all your questions? Here's the first song that you sang. Did I ask you about? Oh, I did. Did I ask you what was the first um, song that you sang? Was that the, what that was the. Um, like the Kiss song. Kiss or, song, right? Kiss song or Elvis. And you know, Elvis, Hound Dog. Song. Yeah. Okay. Hound Dog. Do you want to um, do a little rendition of Hound Dog for us on our way out? <laughs> Wait, I got to turn off your music. No. This is, this is with me. It's like, yeah. Oh. That's not hound dog. That's beautiful. Ah, thank you. Speaking of the record, I uh, uh, this week uh, started the pre-sale on the vinyl, so we're gonna press vinyl. I saw that. Congratulations that there. on Bandcamp. Yeah, on Bandcamp. Um, and one of my good buddies I grew up helped me with the artwork. He's an amazing. He's an LA guy. Uh, Who really did your amazing artwork? Visual designer. Uh, he helped me with all the layout, but this is a kind of a cool story, if, if you allow me. That that picture of the city, that's San Francisco. Um, and the first time we came out of quarantine, you know, I don't know, May, June, when you could start to go out at safe distance. First thing I did is I went and got like a real cup of coffee. <laughs> I was in this little coffee shop uh, not too far from here. And I walked in and I saw like five or six paintings. That was one of them. And it really tripped me out because 
that looks like the view from my front window, like uh, where I do a lot of my writing and playing. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was as if the artist was in sitting in my living room. It was, it was, uh, it was spooky, uh, but in a really cool way. And so she's an amazing local artist named Augustine. How big is Caprigo. the original? What's that? Ooh. Yeah. Augustina. It's beautiful. Augustina. Yeah, uh, she's what amazing. Size? Uh, that, that's formatted for an album, but um, she actually sells them in a bunch of different sizes. But she's so lovely. I reached out to her and sort of told her that story. I said, wow, it's like you're sitting in my living room. Uh, I'd love to partner with you and put this on the record. She's like, yeah, absolutely. So that wow. was really sweet. And so, How yeah, it turned exciting. out really good. So Beautiful. You're such a connector. That's, nah, there that's you go. very nice. Was that her first record album? Yeah, I think um, a while back, she actually was featured on a book. I forget what book. So, um, yeah, she's does some really cool stuff. A lot of it is cityscapes. It's super colorful. I love the color. Oh, I love the colors. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It has mm -hmm. such emotion in it. It's so lovely. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Here's the one that you wrote for your friend. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> we miss everybody. I miss hanging out with everybody. Your album is beautiful. Uh, thank you. You're so sweet. I really appreciate you, uh, one, listening to it and then having me on your show. It's such an honor. I love it. It's, I'm no, humbled. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for coming. It's so hard to hang up and say goodbye because I have, <laughs> like, so many questions. And then I'm like, wait, did I ask that one? Wait, did I ask <laughs> that one? Wait, did I ask that one? I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. Um. And I wanted to say thank you very much for sharing all your delightful stories. And um, I can't wait to hear your love songs. And <laughs> I hope everybody has a great night and goes and sees you play Friday. You're playing Friday? At yeah, the Friday. Desk. It'll be virtual. It'll be online. Uh, I think Facebook? Evening. Yeah. If you, if you check my Facebook, Johnny San Francisco, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be on there Friday night. It should be fun. Friday night. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I can't wait to do you. it again. Yeah, we'll do it again. Uh, but and I like, do I have you. any more questions for you? I could ask a million. Oh, <laughs> did I ask you if you have any tattoos? Um, I have uh, like an armband. I'm all, uh, wait, I can't see it. <laughs> I have a sweatshirt on. Um, take it off. Take it off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, drummers always take their shirts off. There it yeah. is. There it is. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it. there's a lot of detail in it. It's um, it's a winged, uh, a winged sun. Oh. Yeah. And it's actually, believe it or not, it's off uh, one of my favorite records. Uh, record by the band called The Cult, uh, oh. the love album. Um, and I just, you know, ever since I was a kid, I loved the visual. And then, uh, believe it or not, it was um, it's a, a moment of vulnerability. But I was a young kid once. <laughs> and uh, and uh, um, dumb, a dumb one. And uh, <laughs> young one dumb. night, yeah, one night, uh, me and my buddies drank way too much. And then I almost didn't wake up. It was a oh, really okay. bad experience. Um, but the last thing I remember seeing was this, uh, that record cover. Oh. And uh, um, it's just a, a reminder to, you know, slow down. Slow and, down. Yeah. Listen, slow down, and love. Yeah, that's right. I <laughs> love that. Well... Johnny San Francisco. I'm super honored to have had the opportunity ah. to meet you live and in person on the screen, <laughs> which I love. Yeah. And learn some really beautiful things and find out that, yeah, it really is all about love and honor and, and, um, 
Respect and having your wings at the same time, right? That's right. Yeah, well, you gotta let's, keep uh, that. Got to keep that armband on sparkle. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having me, Hannah. You're lovely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'm so honored. Good we'll night, see everybody. Take care. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>